One of the things you'll notice is that the windows have taken on a bit more of a 3D look. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And you'll see that the palettes are now notched and there's a little bit of a greater perception of depth. This change was made across the board to try to bring the user interface up to date with modern style a bit. Now, I've gone and I've rearranged some windows, and if I ever get frustrated with how the windows are laid out, remember, I could choose Window, Workspace, Reset Palette Locations, and everything goes back to its default location. You'll also notice that Photoshop comes with a bunch of workspaces predefined. Now, workspaces allow you to arrange the windows in a custom configuration, generally for a specific task. These have been there all along, but most users didn't know how to harness their power. So Photoshop CS2 has made this a bit easier by including several default workspaces that are well thought out for particular tasks. We choose Window, Workspace, and we have several options here. For example, there's one workspace specifically designed to go over what's new in CS2. And when we choose this, it's going to modify not only the windows, but also some menus and keyboard shortcuts. We'll click Yes. Now, nothing apparent changed, but when we start to click on menus, you're going to notice several things. In fact, everything that's blue means that there's been changes made. So if you want to quickly find out what's new with CS2, just choose Workspace, What's New with CS2 and everything that's been improved or modified is highlighted in blue. I'm going to go ahead and change this workspace back. Let's pick one of the digital photography workspaces, such as painting and retouching. And you will see that several menu items are now highlighted, commands that are useful for photo touch-up. Now, if this is something that you don't need, just turn it off by going back to the default palette locations. However, keep in mind, Photoshop ships now with close to 500 menu items. And if you are a newer user, those items might be a little intimidating to get started. Now, I know you're thinking, where's the video preset? Well, they didn't make one. But if you check my website, photoshopforvideo.com, you'll find that I've posted a menu preset for those new features. I go ahead and I reset back to my default workspace and everything resets to normal. Now, there are a few other things to keep in mind. Last version of Photoshop added our ability to customize keyboard shortcuts. So, if you found that you frequently needed certain items, you can create a keyboard shortcut. For example, maybe you always wanted the deinterlace filter quickly at hand. We can choose the filter menu, scroll down, and you see all of our filters. There's the video category, and I can click next to deinterlace, and I could make that a keyboard shortcut. And this way, if I need the deinterlace filter, it's just a keyboard shortcut away. I don't have to go through the filter menu and navigate to it. So this is a great way to put the tools you use right at hand. Now, many of the keyboard shortcuts are in use, so it may take a little trial and error to find a key combo that's not currently taken. Photoshop CS2 also adds the ability to customize our menus. We just choose Edit, Menus. And this gives you a list of all of your menus. So if there are particular tools that you want to see, you can go through. Power users have always wanted the ability to really customize Photoshop. Now in Photoshop CS2, you've got the ability to customize menus, keyboard shortcuts, color coding, and window positions. Now with all of that power at your fingertips, you've really got no room left to complain. It may take a little bit of time but you can really set Photoshop up to be your application.